I'm Paige. This is my 2004 Thomas International School Bus turned tiny home. This is Dumpling, my one and a half year old puppy. We've been in this bus for nine months and I'm excited to show you around. This is the kitchen space, small but quite useful. We've got a propane stove. It's a Flame King connected to the propane tank in the back. Underneath the stove, we have a 12 volt fridge, cost away, quite large. Then we come to the sink area. I have a 50 gallon freshwater tank and the same size gray water tank. Also, it has a pump and a hot water heater it is the Girard tankless hot water heater that runs off of propane as well. Up here we have the shelf area that's kind of a grab all. You've got the coffee set up with the most important thing in my life, coffee. Just kidding. Chemex is probably my favorite way, but I actually have about five different ways to make coffee in the bus. French press, instant coffee, pour over packs. I didn't really want to be without coffee and I didn't want to invest in the electricity to make coffee with a coffee maker. Um, we've got kind of the bathroom set up here. Again, my favorite bins filled with things to make it look more organized. Uh, I pretty much use this to make coffee every morning. Here we have three big drawers. Top drawer is utensils and kind of a grab bag of things. Next drawer, also a mess. And the pantry with so much food. Um, underneath here we have shower spices. I have a little pull out spice rack and then all of my cleaning supplies, which are pretty crucial. Welcome to the dinette area. Here we have actually a convertible dinette. So this goes down and this slides in and it turns into a couch slash guest bed. It was great when my brothers were visiting, but I normally leave it like this because I work from the road. So I can work right here. I can plug into the inverter right there and have my entire desk set up here. It's also great for relaxing on the weekends. I just put down the dinette and have a nice couch set up. Uh, so there's storage in every single one of these spaces. Tons of things can fit. Uh, this was pretty crucial when I was thinking about going tiny because I didn't live in a big place, but I lived in a place that was bigger than this and figuring out how to bring all the essentials into the bus was crucial for me. I have a lot of gear and a lot of jackets, I learned. So that one's jackets and all my tools, my drill, everything. This one is all of the dog food, dog related things and the wok, cause it's too big to fit in any of the kitchen. And then this one is actually the diesel heater. So the diesel heater's under here. And then in the summer we've converted it to just be backpacks and gear storage. This is the converted bed or couch. It's great for many people to just hang out. It's great for a guest to sleep on. Um, pretty useful space and it really opens up the kitchen area too. I decided to buy a bus back in May of 2020. When the pandemic hit, I moved out of my apartment in San Francisco because we had gone to shelter in place and was really trying to figure out where to spend an undetermined amount of time until things went back to normal. And when it got further and further away, I started to try to figure out what I could do that would allow me to still explore and be outdoors. And in May, I learned what a schoolie was. I was on Instagram scrolling and I saw on camping with dogs that this guy lived with nine dogs in a schoolie. So I looked up the word schoolie and that was it. I spent hours researching school buses, long, short, everything and decided that day that I was going to buy a school bus. In the front we actually have a bunch of shoe storage. All my shoes unorganized, thrown in there, 
really useful for tiny living. I have backup heaters because I bought the bus to pretty much ski as much as possible and wanted every type of heat that I could potentially have in case something went wrong. This whole area is kind of just fake plants because real ones are pretty difficult to keep alive and the stuff basket. You'll notice pretty much all over I have baskets of things because that makes living in this space much easier. This one is anything I need going in and out of the bus. Um, backup keys, sunglasses, sunscreen, maps, lighter, sanitizer, and headlamp. Um, we've got magnets from most of the national parks that I've gone to. I tried to start collecting them. JBL speaker because maybe some buses have sound systems. Mine did not. This sign is one of my favorite things in the bus. It was actually in the bus when it was staged and my friend and I both fell in love with it and when I came to pick up the bus the sign was not in there and so I asked the builder where is the adventure sign it was the most important thing and he looked at me like I was crazy and he told me that it was a sign from his wife's bachelorette party that was travel themed um, but it fits the bus perfectly and it's one of my favorite things welcome to the bathroom this is a nature's head composting toilet I actually really like it I've heard mixed reviews from a couple different people uh, for one person, I think it's awesome. For two, where I think we're pushing the amount of usage that I would want to give a composting toilet in my house. But with two of us, we really don't have to empty the back section, which is the number two section, that often. And then the front section, we probably empty every three or four days. I still very much try to go wherever I can where there's a flush toilet. So this is more of a if there's no other option, it's great. It works perfectly. I don't think I'd want to rely on it every single day, but it fits my needs exactly. This is the shower. It's also connected to the water pump and the hot water heater. I'm a huge fan. I could not imagine not having warm water. I would say the only thing I'd change is I'd also add an outdoor shower. When I'm parked in places as beautiful as Zion, I would love to just put on a swimsuit and shower outside because it's been super hot. But this worked well all winter. It's been a pretty awesome setup. It all drains into the same gray water tank. The walls are plastic shiplap. And the floors are grouted tile. Across from the bathroom is the closet. Beautiful storage that none of you get to see because it's a huge mess. This is all of the storage under the bed. It goes all the way back to the back of the bus and is accessible. So up here I have my liquor cabinet <laughs> and snacks. Welcome to the bedroom. This is a full bed. I have a bunch of storage back there for books, games. There's a charging port in the back. We have windows and actually the back door is still open. So on a sunny day, we'll open that up and get some cross breeze. Above us, we have a Dometic AC unit. This actually only runs on shore power. So I've actually never used it. I've heard they're good. I use the Max air fan and that generally creates a pretty good cross breeze for us. This is the Renogy 40 amp charge controller. This lets me know how full my batteries are. And then next to it, you have a Waggle pet temperature monitor. Again, I got the bus to ski. So my biggest priority was making sure I could ski and my dog could be safe. So that was a great way to make sure that the bus wasn't getting too chilly when I left dumpling in the bus. Another awesome feature of this bed back here is my light switch. I have a light switch in the front and back here so I can just turn this off when I'm going to bed. And then I've got these two separate lights that run on their own circuit and I can turn each of them on individually for a bed light. I still have my full-time job. I work nine to five, nine to five for a tech company remotely. I manage a product line and I can work from anywhere now thanks to the pandemic. So I just need cell service. I also uh, invest in real estate. So I have an Airbnb and a rental property and I do brand deals for Instagram to make a couple different streams of passive income. Uh, back here is what I call the garage and the guts of the bus. Uh, here is all of my gear, extra firewood, the propane tank and the diesel tank for the heater are back here. We have the fuse box, the switch to switch over to 30 amp if I plug in, um, vent for the toilet, 
light for when I'm accessing this at night. And obviously the grill and all my backpacking supplies. These are the house batteries. I've got three of them. They're also connected to an alternator so that they charge when I'm driving as well. This is the back of that liquor cabinet under the bed storage, but it's gear and dog food. My gray water tank emptying tube is in here. Easy up, bike, rollerblades, uh, pretty much all my gear storage that's accessible from both sides. And then you can also see the propane tank right here. And then there's a diesel tank right there too. So I can fill up the diesel heater from this side. Welcome to the best spot, the roof deck. You'll see my three 100 watt Renogy solar panels, emergency exit, max fan, Dometic air conditioning unit, and the hangout spot. I use this spot for rooftop drinks. Sometimes I'll do work up here if um, anyone else is in the bus and we need to split spots for calls. Someone will sit on the roof and work. Uh, we've also, I've also done yoga up here. I brought the bus to Arapahoe Basin and it was just a rooftop deck party at the mountain. But yeah, it's pretty much the best spot. If you're building a bus or a van or anything, I would highly recommend adding a deck. You won't regret it. My thoughts about this lifestyle are that if this is the thing that you want to do that's going to make your heart happy, you can figure out a way to do it. There are people who go on the smallest budgets possible and figure out how to make a van or a bus or a box truck work for them. And then there are people who also buy, you know, the most tricked out beautiful RV and do this. It's not really a lifestyle that has one size. It really is something that can fit whatever you need to make your life work. And so I think you don't have to wait for a partner. You don't have to wait for the right job. You can find work that makes sense for you. You'll probably eventually find a person that wants to do this with you too. But if this is the thing you want to do, I would recommend just doing it. I really just want people to know that like there are so many resources at their disposal that if this is something they want to do, to take a step in the direction to do it. Whether that's start saving money, whether that's put a crazy low offer into some vehicle that you're trying to get, or whether that's just starting to follow a lot of accounts and watching YouTube videos. Um, the internet is a powerful thing. The community is really great. And I would, I think I speak for most nomads where we support other people who are like-minded, who appreciate the outdoors and want to explore it more, getting into this lifestyle. Thanks so much for coming to check out my bus. If you want to follow along, the account is Little Bus Big Adventure on Instagram and newly added to TikTok. I hope to see you on the road. Bye.